So in this video lecture, we will be looking at built-in functions and calculations. Um, SQL allows us to calculate values that are based on the data in the table. So we have a number of different types of built-in functions that we can apply to the data. So these are some examples that we have. We have the count function, the sum function, the average function, the max and the min function. So these are some commonly used built-in functions that we'll be also working with. Um, I also wanted to point your um, attention to the W3Schools link, which I'm going to quickly open here again. So in W3Schools, you have the MySQL functions and it provides you with information on all the different functions that are available for you. Um, it's a good idea just to take a quick look at it. Of course, we don't have time to work on all these different functions, but we will be using some of the most commonly used functions. Um, so if you can take a look at it, it's going to give you with some information on functions that we can work with dates, with numbers, with characters. Um, so take a look at it. So the common built-in functions that we will be focusing on with SQL is the count function, which is going to count the number of records that are present that in a particular column or all the columns in a, all the records in a table. So we'll look at some examples. Um, we have the sum function, which is going to sum the values in a column. We have the min, which is going to look at the minimum of a list of values in a column. And we have max, that's going to look at the max of a value in um, the list of, uh, of a column in a list of values. So also keep in mind that you can add where conditions, as you can see in the syntax here, to a built-in function. So let's go ahead and start looking at some examples. So let's look at the count function and the count function is a function that would work irrespective of the data type of a column. So keep in mind, as I mentioned here, count works regardless of the column data type, but the sum, average, max, and min will only work on integer, numeric, or other number-oriented columns. So that's important to keep in mind. So let's look at a query where we want to count um, the customers at Zmax. Um, so if we want to do that, we can again go and refer to the syntax that we have here. We're going to say select count and then we want to put the name of the column that we want to pull the number of records from, which is going to be customer ID from customer. So let's go ahead and put this in SQL. So I have the query here, which says select and then the count function and then you have customer ID from customer. So let's select this and run it. And you're going to see that it shows you count customer ID as we have, you know, the column here. And it's just returning one value, which is 91. And this means that we have 91 records that are present in the customer table. So with the count function, you can specify the count column name or you can specify count with an asterisk sign. So the count column name counts the number of records that have a value in the specified column name. If there is a null or missing value, it's not counted. So when you use a count against and specify a column name, it's just going to count values that have no missing values in it. Count asterisk or star on the other hand is going to count the total number of records in the table. So even if some of the cell values are null, it will still count the total number of records and return it for you. So it's just important to keep, a, keep this in mind and we'll look at some examples later on. Um, so let's move on to um, using the count function um, using an alias because if you note here, when you look at your result, it shows count customer ID. We can give this uh, function and alias name. So when it outputs it in the result, instead of showing count customer ID, it shows the alias name that we give. So we can use the as keyword that we have already worked with. So we can say select count star. Again, count star is going to count all the records, which is very sim very, the result is going to be the same as the previous query because we don't have a customer ID field that was null. So it's going to give us the same value. So we can say count asterisk as number of customers from customers. So let's go ahead and try to run this in SQL. So I have just um, written this query here and I've run it. And as you can see, the result grid shows me number of customer as my column name. And this is again the result. So again, this is an application of the alias here. And it shows you that in the result, how it's naming that count star 
as number customer in your output here. So we can expand the count function with a where condition. So if the query is asking us to count the number of products with a unit price that's less than or equal to 10. So again, based on this query, we are going to fetch it from the product table because we are going to get, we want to count the number of products. That's what the question is asking us for. So we are going to say select count star as number of low cost product and that's the alias name that we have decided to give it from product where unit price is less than or equal to 10. Again, this is going to be one value that's returned because it's going to go to the product table and count how many records have a unit price that's less than or equal to 10. So I have my query here in SQL Workbench and um, we've written it and when we run this query, we are going to see number low cost product because that's the alias name. And we have 13 records that meet this criteria that has a unit price that's less than or equal to 10. So now we can go ahead and further expand to use many different types of built-in functions. So we are here, let's look at a query that shows the sum of total amount in the orders table purchased by customer ID one. So let's just take a look at the order state. So if we come into workbench, we can click on the spreadsheet symbol here because that's going to do a select star from the orders table and it shows us all the values for the orders table. So I'm just going to click on customer ID because it sorts my result by customer ID. And as you can see here, the same customer ID one has made many different orders because that's typically in a business. The same customer goes and makes many different orders. So what this query is trying to find out is you want to find the sum of the total amount that a particular customer, which is customer ID one has made here. So you can see how one has made multiple orders here. So we're going to say select sum and we want to sum the field total amount. So that's why we have total amount listed there. And we're going to give it an alias name as total order customer ID one from orders. Now our where condition, because we are interested in customer ID one, we are going to say where customer ID equals one. So you don't put one in quotes because this is a numeric data type. So we can go ahead and put this query into workbench and we can run the query here. And when you do that, you're going to see that 4,596 Point twenty two zero is the total orders that customer ID is the sum. So technically it's the sum of the total amount for customer ID one. So we can expand that same query. So instead of finding the sum, we can change it to max. So we can say select max of total amount. And instead of finding the sum, it's going to show us what was the maximum total amount in the orders table for customer ID one. So you can go ahead and run that query and check your result. And we can do the same thing using the min function because the min function is going to find the minimum instead of the maximum. And we have the where condition here for customer ID one itself. So let's look at two, three practice queries here, which you should all be ready to write specifically also based on your previous knowledge where we've worked with other queries um, in the previous videos. So let's go ahead and look at query seven, where we want to write an SQL query that shows the number of customers from the country Germany. The column should display with the title number customer Germany. So try to write this query by yourself. Uh, pause the video and try to do it by yourself. And then we have query eight where you're writing an SQL query that shows the sum of the total amount column in the orders table. For the orders that begin with the order number 543, the column should display with a title total 543 orders. And then finally, we have query nine where you're writing an SQL query that shows the maximum of the total amount column in the orders table for orders where customer ID 63 and 71 are excluded. In other words, all orders except for customer ID 63 and 71. So take a few minutes to try to write these queries and I'm going to come back and share the answers with you. So let's look at our results here. Um, we are looking at uh, query seven where we have select count star as number customer Germany because that's the alias name from customer and in our where condition, we're going to say where country like Germany. Um, so you could have also said where country equals Germany, both will work. Um, and then we can go ahead and select this and run it. And then we're going to see that we have 11 customers that are from Germany. 
Um, so going on to query eight, uh, we're looking at the sum of the total amount. So we have select sum total amount and we're giving it an alias name of total 543 uh, orders from orders where order number like, because we want our orders to begin with 543. And then it's important that we have our percent. So we have worked with similar examples. We're just adding a built-in function here. We're going to select our query, run it, and we see this as the amount, which is the total of the sum of the total amount column. And finally, for query nine, we are looking at the max um, of the total amount from the orders table, but we have a condition that we want to exclude the orders of customers um, 63 and 71. So we can say where customer ID not in, uh, because the not is going to exclude this. And then in is very similar to saying customer ID equals 63 or 71, customer ID equals 71. So this is a more easier way to write that. So we're going to come here, select this and run it, and we should see this as our max total amount.